Hi, my name is Evan Griffiths. I am a sophomore at Michigan State University studying fisheries and wildlife with a concentration in wildlife biology. This past summer, my coworker Hannah Landerlin and I independently designed and conducted a research project on cavity nesting birds. Conducted at Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center under the supervision of Dr. Jen Owen, this project aimed to begin a long-term data set on reproductive success, site fidelity, and return incidents of the cavity nesting eastern bluebird and tree swallow. These two species were selected because they commonly breed in habitat like that found at Cory Marsh, predominantly open grassland. Not only do they breed in the area, but they easily take to nesting in bird boxes, like the 10 we erected on the property at Cory Marsh. Our study on these two selected species extends beyond the reproductive success. They will be used as indicators for species health among an ecosystem permeated by invasive species. Both species rely on aerial insects found in these open grasslands. Given the land use history prior to the establishment of Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center, the habitat is now dominated by invasive species such as reed canary grass, pragmites, multiflora rose, and autumn olive. The impact these invasive species have on the birds' foraging habitats, breeding success, and health is unknown. The corresponding effect on the insect community and the diet of the birds also remains unknown. These impacts could stem from an interruption in the native insect community, which will be evaluated in future research projects. Through this long-term study, we will evaluate the influence of monotypic invasive vegetation on the breeding success of the cavity nesting eastern bluebird and tree swallow. The nest boxes used in our study were graciously provided through the Michigan Bluebird Society Nest Box Grant Program. Our research objectives included begin a long-term research project to be continued by future MSU undergraduates, monitor 10 nest boxes for occupancy by eastern bluebird and tree swallows and corresponding nesting success, Mark nestling and adult birds with aluminum and plastic color-coded leg bands as means of identification. Use banding data to establish a long-term data set on cavity nesting bird health. Future objectives include collect blood samples as further means of assessing bird health, evaluate the effect of invasive plant species monocultures on both the native insect community and the health and reproductive success of cavity nesting birds. Our study began in late March with the installation of our 10 nesting boxes. Following this, the nest boxes were checked weekly for signs of inspection or nest inception. Inspections were indicated by a piece of grass or feather left in a nest box by a prospective adult. Nest inception was proven by a large deposit of feathers and twigs in the nest box following an inspection. These signs of activity were recorded in our data sheet. Nest completion is followed by egg laying completed by our birds from mid-April to early June. Upon nest box inspections, we then began recording the number of eggs laid and the duration of the laying period. The status of the clutches was subsequently monitored and the number of successfully hatched birds were also recorded. When the hatchlings reach an age of 12 days, they are old enough to be banded. Birds at this age have legs large enough to hold an adult-sized band yet are not in danger of attempting to fledge prematurely. In the banding process, shown here, our birds were fitted with an official numbered aluminum band provided by the USGS Bird Banding Laboratory. They also receive a green color band, green being chosen to represent all birds hatched in the year 2020. Measurements on each bird are also taken, including wing, leg, and bill length, as well as mass, shown here. This entire process takes about 10 minutes for a clutch, after which they are returned to the nest box. Upon conclusion of our field season, we had successfully banded eight bluebird nestlings and 30 tree swallow nestlings. This banding and research formed a basis for future fieldwork at the site. Long-term banding and physiological data can be compared to our initial findings and can be used to calculate future changes in cavity nesting bird health and reproductive success. Our research will provide the baseline data needed to assess changes in bird health in response to ecosystem restoration and rehabilitation efforts. These efforts will include the removal of invasive plants and their replacement with native species. Most importantly, this research project has laid the groundwork for future undergraduate MSU researchers to contribute to this long-term study, gaining valuable skills in field-based research, data collection, and analysis. 
This is especially exciting as the close proximity of Corey Marsh to the MSU campus provides ample opportunity for this research to continue to enhance the experiences and education of MSU students.